Eyewitness cinematic overload in the form of the new Lego movie and the new Batman movie. But was it just enough or way too much? Find out here on We Need Movies. There will be minor story elements discussed here and some of the film's references. Nothing major in terms of spoilers, but in case you're interested in preventing that stuff and going in 100% fresh, watch this video after you've seen the film. The Joker is up to his evil ways once again, and Batman must put an end to his clown prince crime wave again. This time, though, Joker has assembled Gotham's greatest adversaries and some not-so-great C-listers. The clown revels in Batman's obsession with him, until Batman announces that he doesn't think Joker is his greatest enemy, and that he's not into ships, as in relationships. Joker is devastated, and plays out the conversation like a scorned lover. Sure, I never had a problem with you fighting others, but we had something special. Batman is a firm believer of his mantra, I work alone, and so he defeats Joker once more without batting an eye pun intended. In his celebration after, however, we see the other side of Batman, one steeped in routine and isolation. His lesson will be to let others in. Joker tricks Bats into sending him into the Phantom Zone, thereby giving the evil psychotic access to the world's worst villains, King Kong, Agent Smith, Voldemort, and oh so much more. Yeah, they're all in here. It's pretty cool. But before I get into the story a bit more, I want to talk about the cast. This cast is a comedian fan's wet dream. First, we start off with fantastic actors. Will Arnett as Batman, Michael Sarah as Robin, Rosario Dawson as Barbara Gordon, Ray Fine as Alfred. Then we swerve into amazingly talented comedian hyphenates. Zach Galifianakis as the Joker, Jenny Slate as Harley Quinn, Jason Mantzoukas as Scarecrow, Conan O'Brien as the Riddler, Billy D. Williams reprising his Two-Face role from the 89 Batman film. Doug Benson as Bane, and Doug Loves Movies fans know that's amazing. Uh, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Kate Micucci as Clayface. Ricky Lindholm as Poison Ivy. Eddie Izzard, Seth Green, Jermaine Clement, Ellie Kemper, Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill, Adam Devine, Chris Hardwick, Ralph Garman, and Hector Elizondo. Ooh, that's a lot of people. This cast is both chock full of raw talent and loaded with comedians. It's like director Chris McKay just chose all of his favorite comedians and or podcasters and gave them parts, and I love it. The Lego Batman movie cleverly serves more than one master in its execution. First, it feels like a full-fledged sequel to the 2014's The Lego Movie in more ways than one might initially expect. It follows the same version of Batman portrayed by Arnett in the 2014 Lego Movie continuing his characterization of being a macho, self-absorbed, solitary superhero, and builds off of that, establishing a brilliant entry point into his character arc deeply seated in the Batman mythos. The film even uses terminology from Lego Movie, like Master Builder, and incorporates that into Batman's problem solving. Oh, and every sound effect is vocalized by the characters. For example, gun sounds are pew pew pew, and it definitely has that spoilers for a Lego movie, kid playing with toys vibe. But Lego Batman does for the superhero cinematic franchise what Batman v Superman couldn't do. It made a fun, nostalgic sequel in the Batman series. Lego Batman is steeped in the lore of the Dark Knight story history. The film makes references to all of the depictions of Batman thus far, even throwing a quick glimpse to the old black and white Batman serials of the 40s. In the end, I felt much like I did at the end of the Lego movie. I thoroughly enjoyed myself, marveled at its execution, and yet worried for the attention spans of our younger generations. Not a joke. To anyone out there 25 or older or so, you know what I'm talking about. Our kids' films used to build story and characters slowly and quietly. When I watch a film like this, I feel as though we're training our youth to be ADHD compatible. And that's an issue. Having said that, the positive largely outweighed the negative, and I would recommend this to anyone out there who wishes to retain the innocent magic of a childhood play session. Chaotic, yet all-inclusive. I give the Lego Batman movie three and a half tickets out of five. 
Brandon and fellow film lovers, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film, especially regarding the frenetic nature of its stimuli. So comment below or write to us at Facebook at facebook.com slash weeningmovies or on Twitter at weeningmovies. Speaking of Twitter, I'm Guy in a Wire, all one word, and Brandon is Brandon Doyen, all one word as well. For longer discussions, write us at weeningmoviesyt at gmail.com. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jamie, and we need movies.